Hi there, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to Confessions of a Domestic Engineer, or as I like to call it, Code. And today, I am taking you down to the base. <laughs> fun all joking aside in this particular episode what i am doing is i am working on painting it is a painting episode really but i'm working on redoing a small little cubby section in my basement it took in some moisture damage predominantly from the previous owner i discovered it over the course of the winter and i've slowly been working on trying to clean it up and clear it out i finally got around to actually doing the painting job i needed to do with the walls and that and then sealing up all the holes and gaps like that i was tired of dealing with it it was causing issues in my laundry room section because i had to pull everything out and put my laundry room so this was me getting to work and uh you know, be a little back and forth between me talking for overdubs and uh, me actually talking live to the camera, and we'll see how this goes. Alright, so here is the storage cubby in question. I've already painted that wall. As you can see, that's one coat. Now, the trim here, I go along, you can see where I've done the trim. And that's just shadowing, not discoloration. It's weird the way the shadows work down here because of the couple angles. But anyways, go around, do some trim here. I'll probably do a second coat of trim in and around there. I try and keep as much off of the ductwork as I possibly can. All the way over here, down here. You can see a little uh, discoloration in there. That is because uh, there is a slight chemical interaction between the uh, silicone I used and the copper pipe. It's not a big deal, uh, just minor discoloration, a little bit of that coppery color bleaches out. Anyways, going down, we get down to the corner here, you can see why I'm fixing this up and painting it. We're not going to plaster the walls or anything like that, we're just going to put a coat of paint on them. But it is specifically because of the holes there that there was such a moisture issue down in this corner because I just filled those in yesterday, and if I hadn't filled those in, you'd still be getting moisture problems down here. Uh, there's one other spot that it looks like there could be an issue. Outside, it's sealed up really good. Inside, I'm not sure if I really want to put some silicone in there or not. I've heard it's a bad idea to do that, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's not too bad, though. I, you know, I don't get any moisture, I'm not getting a rot up there. Most of it is just confined to down here. As you can see, I still got to do this whole section as well. So uh, we'll see how this goes. I want to show you guys actually something that uh, you don't see too much anymore. Let me spin this around. Right there. This is from the old days of knob and tube wiring. Now this is not connected to anything in my house. They just never took out the final pieces. You don't ever want to buy a house where that stuff's still hooked up. I've seen a couple where they still hook it up. You, you can't even technically pass an inspection. You know, your house can actually be, like, told, nuh uh nuh-uh. Uh, you can't get insurance with that shit. Same thing here. You know, you can see a couple left up here. Those are not connected to anything either. We had the house thoroughly inspected when we bought it to make sure that none of that stuff was live or active or anything else. It's just remnants from a bygone era that's still sitting there. So basically all you can see here is I'm just doing the first little corner section that needs to be painted up. Uh, I didn't pre-plan a good spot to put the camera, so it wasn't planned out well for how to do this for filming purposes. If I had been smart, I would have used my GoPro and taken advantage of the fisheye effect it's got to capture more space, and I also could have put it on a tripod, but I filmed it the way I filmed it. It worked out well enough for this, which was shot in, uh, this is four times speed.
The whole thing's four times speed when I speed up. No, I don't. I'm going to film me doing all the painting. You'll see it in high speed. But really, I mean, I'm painting a wall. Who cares, right? It's more about the jibber-jabber over top. <laughs> so, this, this is what a difference one coat makes. Now, there's paint all over the floor. I'm not being careful about getting paint on the floor because all this tile is peeling up and I'm going to coat the floor with a different paint later on. Probably gonna look for the classic gray concrete paint, or if I got enough of this stuff left over, I might even just do some of this stuff. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's uh, that gives you an idea. Let's get back to work. All right, so this uh, next section we're gonna go through has a, f is, is a large section. It's about six minutes. We're gonna throw some music over top of that. I haven't decided what music yet. We know it's obviously the Howling Odyssey. And that means it's obviously pitch time. Uh, so, you know, music found here at Patreon. You can download it if you're one of my Patreons. Um, otherwise, here I am. I'm just going through painting. I'm doing the best I can not to hit the pipes with the roller, but do as much as I can with the roller, trying to get as much gaps as possible. Uh, because I am just painting bare concrete, which has a million nooks and crannies and little gaps in that. They're just cinder blocks, right? You know, it's back from the days of cinder block basements. So, because that's what I am dealing with, what I've got going on here is I am just gobbing it on with the roar. Like, seriously, gobbing it on in huge amounts and just going and working my way down. And as it starts to run out, I reapply. And then, you know, I bring out the brush there to trim and try and keep it at least neat. I don't want to get paint all over the wood that's above it. You know, the, this paint is specifically meant for these type of walls, you know, the concrete walls down in the basement, they're not really meant for wood or pipes or electrical layers. I mean, it's not necessarily the end of the world if you get it on it, but you know, if I can take five seconds and trim it and make it look nice, I'll take five seconds and trim it and make it look nice, right? I mean, it's the basement. It doesn't have to be perfect, as I said, but it doesn't have to be giant cluster fuck either you know uh, and you'll notice I constantly have to keep shifting my shorts I have an issue with weight variance really bad just while I'm up and working seriously tied those shorts up tight before I started working got up started moving and whatnot you know clothes and fabric and that is it just falls off so I'm constantly pulling up my pants that way you guys aren't seeing my ass crack you got enough of that discussion during the Alright, and this isn't too bad. That wire uh, got annoying. I was trying to cut the wire with a pair of clippers I had available. They weren't the right type. So I had to go get something else, and you missed it because I forgot to film it while I did it. All of a sudden, the wires are magically gone. Woohoo! Wonders of editing. And still just going on, trying to get that wall done here. Um, one thing you may not notice is how much I'm slouching, and you might think it's just because of the walls. Uh, truth be told, it's not a very high ceiling down there. I have to be careful or I whack my head off the light fixture or off the ductwork or basically off everything that isn't the actual ceiling beams, you know. Uh, there are only, there's a joke that I only go into very select parts of the basement because there's only very select parts I can actually stand upright in. Um, kids like it keeps me out of their uh, their section basically you know I run down there into their section only to go to the washroom uh, otherwise it's my work room or the laundry room and I hate going to the laundry room and the laundry room is a freaking giant danger to my head the, this little storage nook isn't too bad but I still can't stand up quite straight like I stand up straight but I gotta really watch where I'm walking and it, it's easier to crouch just a little and whatnot also, when you are 42 years old, getting your damn knees down on that concrete is not a nice feeling. Oh my god, it was brutal. Really should have got myself some painter knee pads, but, uh, you know, I'm not doing that much painting. There wasn't, wasn't necessary at the time. 
When I go to start doing other painting projects, it's going to be necessary. I'm getting painted knee pads. I'm too old for that shit. Oh, man. I hate to use the Murtaugh, but it's the Murtaugh, man. It's most definitely the Murtaugh here. And, uh, yep, so just continuing on with the painting. At this point, I'm almost done. Uh, where you see the white already there, that is not white that I had already painted. That was a previous coat of white from the previous owner. For some reason, he never bothered to finish coating this portion of the basement. I'm not sure why. There, there was a lot of things that we ran across where I just kind of shook my head and went, huh? And then, you know, I go, well, whatever. And I just do it. You know, that, that's the beauty of owning your own house is you can go through and do whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want. And it's on your time and it's on your dime. So it's all your decisions. And, and that is really something that is important. And I really wish the housing market wasn't as horrible as it is because realistically it is the easiest way to build equity and at the same time, you know, it's getting to the point where it's priced out of range for kids. You know, there's a reason why my son lives with me, you know, rents my basement from me. You know, he, him and his girlfriend just really, if they had to go rent a place, it would be absolutely ridiculous for them. Like, just not, not affordable. And definitely, when you look at how few jobs pay much above minimum wage, it just, it really is not affordable at all. Alright, here we go, almost done. At this point, I'm just using up the extra paint in the tray, just for the sake of using it up. No, wait, I wasn't doing that here. I just wanted to give an extra coat, I think, at this point. I know I briefly made a couple comments to the camera, but I really... It wasn't worth paying attention to. This is me filling in extra gaps. Because this is the first coat, too. You know, I, I do have to do a whole second coat as well. Which, you know, that's not a big deal. That, that's necessary. It's essential. It's one of those things. Okay, we're down here for round two. And here are the... Uh, central air and furnace unit kicking off and we're just doing a basic tack test to see if it's good to do a second round of paint. My hands are already covered in paint so I'm not worried about getting more paint on if it does. Alright so there's one spot. That spot there was a little wet still because there's a big gob. So as long as there's no big gobs we're good to go for a second round. So I want to do a shout out to my buddy Don Richard who uh, showed me about these things. These are great. Wonderful thing. They make a cool little noise when you pour the paint into the paint bucket. Um, I'm not going to worry about trimming this time around. I'm just going to get into it with a roller right away. Reason I'm not bothering with trimming is this is the basement. It's not the house. I'm not trying to make it look nice. And in all honesty, the walls are going to end up being covered later on anyways because this is turning into a set for Chris Joe Bob. That's right, Chris Joe Bob's coming back. This will be a little set, but it's not just gonna be a, a little set for Chris Joe Bob. It's also going to be, you know, like a little, uh, we'll call it a storage area for the household crap as well. But anyways, let's get to painting. And here we go, we're gonna get into the uh, second coat of paint. I know I'm talking to the camera there, but I'm not really saying anything more really important. It's kind of different a little bit there. Kind of like I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, I was just talking about basically something to do with paint there. Yeah, that sounds really great, right? Yeah, that sounds so much better there instead of that, right? Uh huh. Okay, so, 
Um, yeah, there's not much going on here, really. Like I said, I'm just putting it on the second coat of paint. I didn't bother to trim. It was just about trying to fill in as many gaps as possible and use up as much of the paint as I could um, generously on the wall. You know, like I didn't want to go and do a third coat. Uh, there honestly wasn't enough left to do a third coat at the end. There's enough left where I could do a little extra um, behind my, uh, my washer and under the window and stuff like that, which you can't see here. But there isn't enough to do a full third coat. Which is okay, I'm fine with that. And, yeah, it's just, I wanted it to look nice and coated. So that, that was the plan, that's what we went with. At this point, I'm gonna say, you know, just enjoy the music in the background because I don't have much to add. I'll add it if something pops up. Yeah, almost there, folks. We're almost there. That's how it's feeling at this point with the actual recording and the filming. And it's also like, are we there yet? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? It was finally almost there. Almost there. Yay, we're done! So yeah, that that was it. That was me uh, painting that basement. Uh, that is also uh, mild resi mildew resistant paint. I know I didn't mention that in the beginning. Probably should have mentioned that in the beginning because you know who knows if you're still here watching this. But it's mildew resistant paint, and because it is damp down in my basement, even with a sump pump, we had a sump pump installed. It's just been really, really moist here in Windsor. It gets really damp down there. I'm hoping I've taken care of part of the problem. I know there's other problems I still got to work on. Unfortunately, a lot of those other problems look like they're coming from outside, which means they're outside problems with outside solutions, and that's a whole different headache. Oh, my Lord. I've been through that headache before. I'm not in a rush to go through it again. All right, so, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Hope you picked up something of interest here. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the questions. Otherwise, I do thank you very much for watching. You know, comment section, use it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hope you really dig the Howling Odyssey music. I really enjoy it, which is why I put it on for you. I actually still half-ass enjoy listening to it. Uh, I am working on getting as much of the old stuff done and out there as possible. And hopefully we'll get to some new stuff sometime in the future. <laughs> Anyways, otherwise everybody, uh, peace, love, take care.